All right, hey, this is different because, well, there's no profile shot of me as we're getting started, <laughs> but I am Brent Leary. Um, I'm still Paul Greenberg, right? Even though it's I different? So. All right, I and I'm so. Paul Greenberg. And we are the CRM players, and we're not in Vegas, and we are on LinkedIn Live. How about that? So we're not in Vegas. We're not on Facebook. This is revolutionary. No, I don't know about all that. Yeah. This is evolutionary. This, this is, is retro. This is something we haven't quite figured it out yet. But yes, we're back. We're not in Vegas. We're not at any conferences. We are just chilling in our prospective houses. No, well, not exactly chilling. Uh, that's probably not the right word. <laughs> yeah, it is about 100 degrees out there. Yeah, right here now. it's like 95. So we yeah. are heating in our respective <laughs> houses. Speaking of heat, there's this hot topic everybody's kind of talking about that to me just came out of nowhere with uh, IBM announcing that they are spinning off Watson and creating a new business called Watson Marketing. Yeah. And the train, yeah. I guess, likes that idea. Yeah, that's right. It was a woo woo. It was W O O T. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, uh, this whole thing, I guess, maybe caught people off guard. I, I wasn't looking at it, but it definitely caused people to, to stop and look at IBM. Um, because quite honestly, when it comes to the kind of CRM stuff, IBM has become an afterthought. Do you think this changes anything? Do you think as this article, I'm going to pop up uh, this article here because it was kind of eh, kind of interesting how they phrased it. So let me see if I can bring that in. And plus uh, it's cool that we can pop it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm hoping it's cool that we can pop it up. There we go. There we go. There, there there and there it is it was kind of a quick pop but uh it's caught my attention i had to ask you about it so the the, the title alone was like okay so this is from business insider ibm is spinning off its advertising business ibm watson marketing and it could be bad news for adobe oracle and salesforce to you i say is that the case or is this just kind of some kind of clickbait to get us to look at this. Uh, could is probably the operant word there. I mean, there's nothing definitive about that. Look, I, I was thinking about this. If you remember a few months ago, IBM sold off almost all its marketing assets to, what was it, HCT or L or something. I, they sold it somewhere. And yeah. they sold Unica off. They sold Silver Pop off. They sold all the marketing assets off. At the time, I know the way I viewed that was IBM pretty much failed at doing that anyway. I mean, they had really wasted a ton of money, not due to the assets fault. I mean, Unica was for, it was an on-premise product, but it was good for its day and Silver Pop was good for its day. But because IBM literally wasted the money. I mean, they literally like did not know how to do that. Um, now, you see this, and uh, and it's really to center center bridge, or as one uh, intrepid journalist called it, center point. Um, uh, <laughs> I like I'm centipede. <laughs> I'm centipede. That's right. They call it centipede. Um, <laughs> and you're right, though centipede works better. Uh, so they sell this off to center bridge, which says, okay, well, IBM Watson is going to have marketing automation features and it's going to have you know advertising digital advertising and so on and so forth and it'll be ai driven and blah 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 we don't have a name for it yet we don't know really what it's going to do exactly yet but we do know that's our intent so you start putting that together the selling off of the marketing cloud and it's, uh, the marketing uh, assets in this one of two conclusions that you, I think at least I could possibly say. One is, once again, they just have no idea what to do with marketing, so they got rid of it, right? And and to be honest, I tend to lean that way, and, and to give it a more positive spin, it's a way of 
getting rid of assets since they didn't know what to do with them that would allow them to focus on the things they want to do, which is kind of this, you know, cloud-based universe of infrastructure. And basically, they want to get into business that Microsoft and others are getting into more intently. And, and IBM's had a historic problem of uh, ADV kind of approaches to things. They, they can't focus in, on things very well. And they accomplish very little as a result of that because it's so diverse and so big, and then they, and they have no idea how to strategically target and focus. And they've been a problem. It's why they don't penetrate into the markets that we routinely see them. On the other hand, um, let's even assume on a more positive note that <clears throat> Center Bridge does, you know, which is an investment company. It's not a it's not a consulting company. Center Bridge invests well, and they build up something that would be you know something to put into the market the reality is that if you look at salesforce and you look at oracle and you look at uh sap and you look at adobe they're all moving beyond Mar martech per se it doesn't mean they're not doing marketing automation but they're either focusing on more customer experience meaning building experiences so experiential kinds of marketing or they're focused on engagement and engagement marketing, which is Marketo and Adobe side of that. And, you know, Adobe has both the CX and the CE sides of it. They're all they're all moving beyond that. Plus, the MarTech market itself is a bloody mess, thanks to 7,500 so-called entries in it. Um, and nobody can really figure out what it is at this point, other than that the core stuff needs to be there. And then you have evolutions that are going beyond traditional marketing, but are still valuable in the MarTech world, like Thunderhead type of journey orchestration, you know, and that, that kind of stuff. So IBM's coming in, or Centerbridge is coming in with a, with a kind of unnamed offering that's unclear as to what it actually is, other than that it's, that IBM isn't gonna have it. It's gonna have, they're spinning it independently. Uh, and, and they're coming in at a point where everyone's starting to go beyond it. So that's, could they compete? They're IBM, you know, they're big, they got money. Depends on if they can focus and if Centerbridge actually puts real money into it. Yeah, they, of course they could compete. They're right. Again, they're IBM, but they don't have the street cred to compete at this point either. They don't have a presence that anyone trusts in marketing because they just got rid of all their assets. And people <laughs> are still seeing it as IBM anyway, not as center bridge marketing, IBM Watson marketing, right? So um, I do I hold a lot of promise for it? No. Could I be wrong? Sure. But um, I don't think when they come into the market, they're going to be in a position to really compete in it. It doesn't mean, though, that if they don't invest, if, if they invest well, if they expand, yeah, they'll compete. But it's going to take them a while to even get there. Right now, they're unnamed, unformed, and um, and untrusted. So I'm, I, I don't think, I think, let's say this, I think Salesforce, Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, and Adobe, and, you know, Adobe Marketo should keep their eye on it, but I don't think they have a lot to worry about. What about you? What are you thinking? Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it caught people's attention. It, it, it definitely caught the industry's eye, but I, I don't know if that's enough to sustain anything. Yeah. Um, it's it, like you said, they sold off, you know, some of their hardcore CRM ish kind of applications to the uh, private equity firm. Um, and it seemed like if they were going to make this move, what shouldn't they have kept some of those pieces if they really want to compete against the Adobe's and the sales forces and the Oracle's who have, you know, complete marketing clouds at this point. Yeah. Um, and they have all of them just recently announced, you know, their CDP stuff and, you know, they have their own kind of individual uh perspectives on how to bring those together on top of all their other marketing cloud assets and in the article that you pointed out they it did say hey and not only do they have you know marketing cloud assets in the in the sense of oracle and, and salesforce they have uh, you know surrounding pieces to it and you know it, it, some of those ibm 
uh, pieces that they bought years ago, you didn't see like a progression to those applications and you yeah. never saw them bring them together to create, you know, something that could be considered a marketing cloud. Uh, Watson, it's really interesting because Watson was the first one of all this to really evangelize and make AI kind of known to the common man, but they didn't do it in a way that like, for example, the way Salesforce evangelized uh, Einstein and AI, it was AI that had a context to it. Whereas Watson, great commercials, doing, showing some really incredible stuff, but it, it seemed like it was all over the place. And yeah. it's kind of hard to find the business context, whereas Adobe, Salesforce, Oracle have completely zeroed in on you know AI from, mar from a marketing perspective, how you can predict you know, lead scoring and how that's impacted and, you know, other aspects that made it easy for businesses to, to understand how this could actually help them. Whereas, you know, IBM had this powerful thing called Watson and it was great for, you know, beating Spassky and all those, you know, the chess players. And it was great for, you know, going up against uh, Alex Trebek, you know, for that stuff. But it didn't make sense from a business perspective, from a marketing perspective. And that's what I, you know, it's been missing the, the whole time that Watson has been around. Will that change now that it's all about Watson and all about marketing? Maybe it will, but they're playing catch up and it's it's a significant lead the other ones have on. Yeah. <clears throat> the one place where if I were them, I'd be putting money uh, is well, two places, but one in particular, which is they announced in the course of this that they're going to. I forget the terminology they used exactly, but it was like they were going to have an open ecosystem for partners and so on, and thus provide the APIs and so on and so forth. But and that is where their promise. For example, they're not going to be great at. I I I don't know if what Watson does with lead scoring, for example. I have no idea, but there are some amazing lead scoring both products that are there out there or will be out there soon enough consequently um you know if ibm is smart they'll invest significantly in um in um working with these partners put a lot the biggest problem they have of course is that all these other companies already work with a lot of them right yeah. and so um but you know then to the the partners are not necessarily exclusive to it. So, you know, the, the opportunity for IBM will lie in the ecosystem and partnership if they're willing to put the time and money and effort into it, which to be perfectly frank, given my immense lack of faith in IBM, uh, I don't think they'll do it right. Um, I, and again, that just comes from watching the history of this over years, not so much from their intent or their malintent or, you know, or their uh, or their premise for existence. And and I think if I'm really looking at this in the light of absolutely clear in the light of day, it's more a divestiture than it is a new business, right? For all of this stuff, it's like get these assets out of here. Let us focus on a core business around private and public cloud or whatever the hell they're going to be doing. And that's where we're going to focus our time, effort, and money. Um, and so this becomes kind of a, yeah, we're spinning them off. We're going to do this and this and this. But the reality is we're getting rid of it. Uh, we're getting rid of things related to uh, the CRM niche side of what we've done, the customer CX side of what we've done, because we've never been very good at it and probably never will be. And as, as that, I mean, if you remember back when they were doing IBM Social, um, they were terrible at that, right? And they, they, uh, and that's Lotus and Domino were getting, you know, kind of getting on track with that. Now, again, with that same horrible reporter, uh, <laughs> that same horrible, not the reporter wasn't horrible, the article was a journalist editor's nightmare. Uh, she's, this, this reporter says they're getting rid of Lotus and Domino's, right? The pizza place, I assume. Right, so uh, yeah, Lotus and Domino's and Centerpiece, <laughs> Centerpiece bottom. Um, so, uh, but you know, they had they had to dump Lotus and Domino at that by that 
point when they got rid of the uh, marketing assets because when it came down to it, Lotus, which is a great platform in its day, um, had been a complete failure in IBM's hands. IBM took it and destroyed it. And it had the potential to do all of those, build those social apps and all the things. And they were actually kind of integrated into that area for a little while. But it failed again. I mean, they failed at social. They failed it. They've pretty well failed at uh, mostly, I think, just due to a lack of attention. But they pretty well failed at most everything customer facing that they've done when it came to technology. Mm. That's just not good. <laughs> no. Remember, they were going to be a social business. And they were going to oh, yeah. power all 400,000 employees. I think they got to 400 employees before they did that. <laughs> That's the other thing. You know, IBM, their reputation, they have a reputation. And for the vast majority of their time in business, it was a, it was a powerful reputation. It was a great reputation. But in certain areas, they just were never really able to make the transition. And, you know. This is one of those areas. They bought a lot of pieces, like you said. I mean, Unica, uh, uh, the one here, Silver Pop. Silver Pop. I mean, those those are some some good pieces to the puzzle. They just never put them all all the pieces together. And no, you know the irony is they. I was talking to someone related to the Unica thing a while back, and he was telling me that they had invested. IBM had invested after the acquisition. Now, IBM had invested. Two, I think it was two billion dollars in it, and and wow. it given and and had and they had over a thousand employees, but every single time they tried to do the, the unit, actually tried to do something, IBM bureaucracy would get in the way, and they couldn't do anything, and eventually they just kind of quit. Uh, I mean, that's you know they bought. Remember they bought Cognos, like yeah. That. A long time ago, I mean, didn't they buy SPSS too or something like I that? I think or? they did. Yes, they did. I so, so they they bought some really top notch pieces, and it just never happened. I mean, yeah. they can't compared, focus. Yeah, compared to look at the acquisitions and the and the integrations strategies that companies like Adobe and Salesforce and Oracle had. I mean, they bought nice pieces, but then they knew how to put them together and create. You know, we're talking about marketing cloud here, and IBM. They they bought some good pieces. They just weren't able to put them together and make something of them. Well, you know, a good, perfectly a good counter position to your point is Oracle. I, I was looking at this. I'm writing this piece on Oracle and Microsoft on the watch list winning. So I was looking at Oracle's acquisitions from 2012 on and kind of the CX side of it. And I was fascinated by what emerged when I was looking at it. I mean, we're talking about companies like, you know, uh, obviously Eloqua at the core. And right now? Respond, right, right now, Eloqua, Responses, Maximizer, you know. Um, um, collective Intellect. Collective yeah. Intellect, Blue Kai, Blue, all of Blue these. Kai, yeah. And you know what fascinated me? I mean, Oracle was really, when I realized how it worked, it kind of went to my heart, uh, the heart of what I think about one of the things I've always thought about Oracle is they really know how to build products. They're really good at building products. And if you look at the social cloud, which was uh, put together by uh, Tara Roberts, who's like a genius at building stuff, um, Blue Kai and Collective Intellect were core pieces of social cloud, right? And then social cloud, of course, was built in across. It wasn't really a cloud. I mean, that was, again, <laughs> like Salesforce, both of them misnamed everything into clouds. but <laughs> uh, but it was a layer in, that was built right into the other, the actual clouds they have for social, you know, communication. And but they took the acquisitions and fully stitched them together and integrated them a hundred percent into what they did, and it became a necessary piece. So the acquisitions became valuable. Responses, some of these others, very similar. You know, they became either functions or feature function or layers in the layers in a larger cake so to speak or they became you know the core 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 uh piece like eloqua which was you know on premise when they bought it but now it's or on premise and cloud i guess but now it's fully uh fully cloud and and you know and, and a lot of the pieces they bought i noticed were specifically cloud-based versions of things that they already had to on the on premise 
so that they could just tie it together and build it in and then integrate all of it. And they did a great job at acquiring appropriately. They didn't waste their acquisitions the way IBM seems to have. Right. It's, uh, I'm trying to get this up. So that, and then you look at what Adobe did. I mean, you know, going back to, uh, I always forget the one that, uh, Orem, uh, what was that? The one that, uh, out of Utah, which the, one did, did what for for Adobe for the the, the kind of the foundation to start with that analytics piece? You mean Omniture? Uh, Omniture? Omniture, that's right. Yeah. Omniture, and then all the other pieces that they bought, you know, the, you know, with the experience manager stuff and the targeting stuff, and and of course, you know, they bought Neo Lane, and, and they bought, of course, the, you know, the latest ones with Marketo and Magento, um, and although it, it went from uh, kind of you know, marketing cloud to experience cloud, that's because marketing is a part of, you know, experiences that are coming across the whole channel of customer engagement. So everything they bought fit. And you look at Salesforce, you, know, you can say the same, even going back to Radiant 6. And yeah. uh, what was that? It was Radiant 6. And then that was that other uh, piece wow. that they bought. <laughs> what? You mean Buddy Media? Yeah, Buddy Media. <laughs> that was a waste, though. Of course, uh, they called that the, the 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 social cloud, and like you said, that wasn't right. quite it. But you could you could take it back all the way back there, and then you could go through the exact target piece, and then you know, of course, all the stuff with MetaMind and you know, Data Rama, and you name it, all the pieces they bought. You could see where it was going. Yeah. Um, well, IBM, you purpose. just couldn't see that. No, and well, IBM, it was like. They bought, bought something that goes into a giant sinkhole. And even if IBM spends money on it, they don't do the other thing they're doing. They, they're, I mean, I know that there would be people who would disagree with me. And this is based, some of this I'm about to say is based on my personal experience with IBM on outreach. Uh, total disaster. I mean, absolutely terrible. I, I, I don't talk to them at all anymore. I gave up. I actually literally gave up. Uh, because I used to get talked to them by eight different analyst relations groups who had no idea the other ones were talking to me and some of them were completely not related to anything i was doing and and uh and it's just again it's the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing kind of thing with them all the time and at a certain point i used to go to for example lotusphere i used to be my first job in the entire universe of tech was building lotus notes practices so i know the product well and i always i've always been a fan and IBM knew that, of course, and uh, you know, in the earlier days, and I would go to Lotus Fears under IBM, and then I stopped getting invited, and I kept saying, I called them twice, two years in a row, and I said, how come I haven't been invited? They said, oh, God, I'm sorry, we fell between the cracks. And that was year one. And then year two, not invited again, I said, how come I wasn't invited? They said, you fell between the cracks. I said, you don't fall between the cracks two years in a row, right? I yeah. said, Either that or you guys really, really need to repair your house, right? Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and that was kind of the last straw at that point. But they're, they're not good at that. They're not good at outreach. They're not good at – they have good AR people, some good in AR people, a few of them. But as a, as a strategy, as a program, I mean, you compare them to – of course, this is a ridiculous comparison because it's so – where I had Salesforce, who was like the best at it in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and you know, you watch this company basically not, I mean, they'd like kick themselves in the head nonstop with IBM's constantly kicking themselves in the head. And they're terrible at thought leadership. I don't, they don't attend the industry. If they really are attempting to go into a customer facing part of the world, they attend absolutely nothing in that world. They, they don't yeah. support the industry horizontally at all. You know, I mean, they don't do anything to give you an indication that anyone should pay any attention to them. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of, be, I don't know if they were even an afterthought because, I mean, we, we've gone to all of them, all the events and speak to, you know, the, you know, not all, but, you know, the majority of the kind of the big events in the industry. And, you know, you know, what's funny, you, you go to these events and, you hear from the keynote stage, you hear the, you know, the, the CEOs or the C-level folks, and you can tell 
when they are referring to sometimes indirectly, sometimes completely directly to their competition. And or when their competition is having a big event, you can tell because you get all sorts of emails and announcements from their competition trying to steal their thunder. And that happens with, with you know, when you go to a Salesforce event, you get things from Oracle and you get things from Adobe. You go to an Adobe event, you get things from Salesforce and Oracle. And, and, and if you go to an Oracle event, you get things from Salesforce and Adobe. Do you ever hear anybody talking about IBM? <laughs> no, literally, you're right. Literally never. I mean, and I'm not trying to take a dramatic license there. They literally never. It never happens. Yeah, yeah, at all. At Which all. Which is amazing. Yeah. I mean, because as huge as they are, and they still have a, a very big footprint, but when it comes to the marketing space, at least, let's say, well, I was going to say at least at the mid and enterprise level, but why why stop there? Because you know nobody's thinking about IBM at the, the lower levels. So it's just that they haven't been there. And and although, like I said, with Watson, everybody points to Watson as being very uh, great technology and has done some really interesting things. But I never hear them say that in the context of marketing or looking towards them as a potential marketing solution or as a digital or an ad tech solution or anything. I agree. Right. I, I mean, I, I look, I would like business. I would, I think business insiders premise that they're a potential threat to, to Adobe, et cetera. Uh, sure. Their IBM. So potential is the word you can always use, but it's more of a CYA word. Um, the reality is at this point, I don't see them as a threat to anybody or anything because they haven't done any work to other than, you know, here, Center Bridge, you go do this, right? Uh, that's all they've done, you know? And other than that, there's no preparatory work. They haven't contacted analysts in our universe at all that I know of in advance. And maybe they have, and maybe we're just on the outs because they don't like yeah. independence. It's possible. That's, Martin, that's probably it. Yeah. It could be. I'm, yeah. Although, our, let's say this. Unless it was a really strict NDA, our gossip network is big enough that we would have heard. It. <laughs> but, but, I mean, if there's an NDA, we wouldn't have heard it. Okay. But uh, but if there isn't, or if there was just sort of low key or just conversation, we have, I'll put it this way we haven't even heard any speculative conversation until it happened. Not yeah. even, because nobody really, to be honest, I think, I don't know about you, but IBM's not in my thoughts day to day, <laughs> but for sure, the, where the other companies are. You know, and I mean, it may mean I have a very limited life, but, you know, <laughs> the reality is, you know, Look. somebody, we go and you, you talk to, say, Constellation or, or Gartner or Forrester Analyst, who we know, or IDC Analyst, or, you know, you talk to Mike over G2 or something like that. And, you know, conversationally, we'll talk about Oracle, Salesforce, SAP, Microsoft. We'll talk about them all the time, good or bad, but we'll talk about them. Right. And this one don't even bothers. No. Don't even bothers. And it's not our fault, man. I sorry to say it's their fault. Right. And uh, you know, we are we're receptacles. I hate I mean <laughs> we're just yes. you, you you put out the information, we'll take it in, man. That's it. Okay, and we'll respond accordingly. You know the one kind of really interesting thing that is the headline and all the discussion is how so obvious, uh, conspicuous, the uh, omission of Microsoft and SAP to this whole discussion. I haven't seen anybody throwing those two names really into the mix. Uh, and from Microsoft perspective, you know, maybe, you know, they have a, their work, they have a, a marketing piece. It's not a, what you would call a cloud or, you know, up to what's going on with Adobe and Oracle and Salesforce, maybe the Adobe piece, their partnership allows them to have, you know, a, an entree in there. But it's just really conspicuous how Microsoft is missing from one of the most important discussions and, and one of the hottest trends in the CRM ministry right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I know they're working on their own. And I think a lot of that's because of, when it boils down to it at the enterprise level, Adobe's their offering, you know, and it, yeah. and it really is. I, they're not, I don't even think Microsoft's trying to be enterprise level my marketing cloud of Microsoft, you know. Uh, I think they're going to build mid-market, you know, that which is 
legitimate, you know. But yeah. I think I, I don't know what how Marketo is going to play in this one particularly, but I do know that I think the Adobe Microsoft partnership, the uh, the GARP partnership, as <laughs> we call it, um, the GARP partnership is pretty much why you probably don't hear Microsoft's name bandied about because the assumption is it's Adobe's, you know, uh, experience cloud. And then as far as SAP goes, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment now because I'm getting a briefing next week for an hour on the Adobe, Mar I mean, on the uh, SAP marketing cloud. So I don't really know where it stands. I know they had a long way to go uh, that they weren't, at the same level as the others, but it's been over a year since I had any briefing at all. So on that, so next week I'll have something to say about it, if long as I'm not you know, under some NDA. Yeah. But, yeah. but but maybe we can have a conversation then uh, on it because I, I mean, I'm curious. Because look, one thing I'll say about SAP with all my you know battles with the company and uh, it's that relationship I have that sort of not really a love-hate relationship, but sort of the equivalent. It's a love-frustration relationship. Uh, is um, that they they when they put their mind to building something, they really do build a good one. Like Samir building Jam, uh, oh, yeah. you know, or or even the sales cloud that they have now, which is you know uh, the SFA uh, the SFA uh, Gartner SFA. Um, oh, the Magic Quadrant. Quadrant came out, I guess, the last couple of days, and the, the five companies in it, and I'm very proud of the one you know which I'm going to bring up, were, but the, f the five companies were Microsoft, Salesforce, SAP, and Oracle, and BPM Online. Yay. <laughs> yeah, really that, uh, that, they definitely, when you throw those names out there, they're the ones that's like, wow. Yeah, that's and which is cool. I think it's great that they're, they're getting some due. But I'll, I'll say this, uh, you know, SAP has made some really good acquisitions. Well, some interesting ones, some good ones and some interesting ones, I guess, over the years. Uh, of course, Caldas Cloud being one of those and Gigya and Qualtrics wow. one is kind of people still kind of trying to figure that one out a little bit. Um, but yeah, it seems like if, I, you know, SAP is kind of, uh, you know, coming up behind the big three of marketing cloud. I'll put it like that. Because right. you got to say Adobe, Oracle, and Salesforce, they are separated from the crowd. Right. Um, and and I would say SAP has got better a chance to get, you know, catch up than IBM does. Oh, God, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Not even so it's so. When they when this article talks about bad news for Adobe Oracle and Sales, I don't see it as that. At least not immediately, or no. even in the kind of in the medium term. Um, I would say SAP has a more uh, a better chance of doing something than IBM. Yeah, no, I agree, and you know it's very possible SAP has already done it. And I, I mean, they'll just have to go out and. It's always the difficult point for them. They're going to have to go out and publicize it, right? Which is really right. the important thing for them is their not the products they build, because again, I've seen some brilliance out of that company, but the, yeah. it's really the work they do after the products are built that they have to step up. And well, IBM, I don't see them even vaguely contending for a long, long, long okay. time. And, you, kinda, and you know what? I, I hope they prove me there. wrong, yeah. and I challenge them to prove me wrong. If you can prove me wrong to a degree that I'm comfortable with, and I'm, I'm happy to say I was wrong. I will publicly say it. On this show, yeah. that I was wrong, but you got it. You got to prove it. And right now, honestly, I don't think you have a shot in hell. So you, so there's the challenge. <laughs> I'm saying IBM, you don't have a shot in hell to make your marketing cloud competitive. So now prove me wrong. Yeah, I, I think that's got to be kind of the stance because have we seen anything over a decade or so that would point to this happening? Nope, I haven't. And anything they've ever done with it has been either to fail at it or divest it. So, yeah, and this is being this is not like some kind of I got a, a grudge against IBM. I, I really I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't have much. I, I I mean, in the past, I've done stuff for IBM. Um, and I know a lot of really great people. Some of the best people I've met in the industry are were IBMers. 
I would love to see them, you know, make a horse race out of it because that would make it more interesting. But I'm not betting any money on it. For like me, that. me either. In fact, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> next time I'm in Vegas, I'm going to make a point of not betting any money. On it. <laughs> All right. So let's talk a little bit about seats since that's like uh, less than two weeks away at this. Yeah. Point. What is today? Today is the third. Ten days. Eleven days. 12 days, well, 11 days, if you count the pre-meeting meetings with uh, leagues and stuff, the closed meetings. So, yeah, 11 days. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know about you, but looks like, I mean, it's, you know, unfortunately we're going to Florida in the middle of the summer, okay? So that pretty much <laughs> tells me I'm not going outside ever unless I absolutely have to. Nah, it's going to be hot, pretty hot on the racetrack, too. So. Yeah, well, I won't be on the racetrack. I will literally <laughs> be in the buildings on the racetrack. I am not going to be doing the ride around or any of that stuff. I have no know, other, I'm not a car guy. I am probably – I love going there uh, every year. I love trying to, you know, hang out with the Rams folks that are there. That's conference. <laughs> that's – that's, yeah. Uh, but what I think – I think this is the year where we're going to, the CRM players are going to have a really good lineup of people to, 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 to talk to and have conversations with and help maybe even live stream some of the stuff we have. Cause you already nailed down. You've already nailed down a few folks that we're going to talk to. Yeah. Well, first, thanks to Christine Stoffel, of course, is the chairman of the conference and the former CIO of the Arizona Diamondbacks back in 2007. And, a pioneer. I think she was the first female sea level executive in professional sports ever. Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, she's a real role model and awesome human being. I love her to pieces. But she, we asked her, of course, as her conference, if, we, if it was okay to do some Sierra and Players episodes. And she not only said, yeah, she loves the idea, but she's going to find us what we need for a room and stuff like that. So to that end, we've nailed down for the actual event we've nailed down her and maybe her family who's also very active in the uh, event and then we've also nailed down uh, i'll say the the most interesting meaning the most unique i should say for last we've nailed down charlie shin who is a brilliant brilliant guy is the the vp of fan engagement for major league soccer is probably one of the singularly most forward-thinking brilliant minds in the sports world uh, we've nailed down, but well, we're working on one, which I won't, we've nailed down Jonathan Becker and Jonathan, who also will be on a panel that, you know, Brent and Jesus Hoyos from Salvas Consulting and Jonathan himself will be on that I'm moderating on fan engagement. Jonathan, for those that don't know, is the former CMO of SAP and is now the president of the San Jose Sharks and Sharks Entertainment. And he's got a unique perspective given he's been in the technology vendor world and he's also now in the sports world directly. And he's also, again, he thinks like a thought leader. He does not think like a, uh, a vendor selling product. He's always thought like a thought leader. And so he, he's an, and he's good sense of humor, good hearted person, really smart, a great friend of ours for years. So he will be on the players. Um, We've, we're working on one, which we leave out now, but um, it involves baseball. Um, <laughs> we are going to also have another one, which is still a little up in the air as to who, but we'll be on the enterprise vendor, on the vendors who are doing sports. So we'll have two or three vendors on. Uh, and that'll be easy because they'll be happy to be on the show. <laughs> and we'll have a good time with them. And then the unique one is this. We're going to have two people on who you probably haven't seen on a, on a players like episode before anyway, but I know you've seen at least one of them frequently. One is Ricky Volante, who is a sports attorney and is also the CEO of what's called the Historic Basketball League. The other one is the all-star, just retired, I guess end of 2017, um, former NBA player David West, who is now the COO of the Historic Basketball League. So David and Ricky are going to be on to talk about themselves. They're going to talk about the Historic Basketball League, what it's trying to do. And I think you'll be very, very, um, very wise to listen to what they're trying to do. And one of the reasons that we wanted 
uh, David on as far as it goes, aside from the fact, you know, he was a great player, is if you ever watched interviews with him after a game or on a sports channel, he was always this incredibly well-grounded, humble, good person. And which, you know, you can't say for a lot of athletes. And so um, the other other thing is that personality, you know, is aside from, and also he has a hell of a business head too, which is really another side of him. And, but that personality, his business head in combination with Ricky, who's got the experience, the smarts, who's got the legal background, you need to set up things like leagues, um, make what they're trying to do really a worthwhile project. And you'll see it's a project for the good of young people. So uh, we're going to have them on. That'll be a special episode. And I think, um, I think it will, it'll be worth your time to watch it live if we can do it live, but certainly in full afterwards. And there may be other ones. We, we have, we're going to do at least five or six of these. We're going to be busy with Sierra and Play, the biggest Sierra and Play single uh, group ever. But you forgot, or you you didn't mention the other thing that we're going to be doing at uh, at seat, announcing the winners of the oh, midseason conference that's awards. Right. Yes, fill it in. Fill them in. Well, we are. Uh, we kind of gave you a little taste right. of the last time um, of the categories, but uh, we're going to announce them. I hope live and live streamed from the Daytona Speedway, not in the cars, but we're going to <laughs> announce it. <laughs> and uh, I, I think, do we have the date? Is it gonna be on the 15th? That would probably be, let's say yes for now, even though that that is subject to change with notice, <laughs> though, with notice. Yes, so we'll say pencil it in for the 15th. We, we have to figure out exactly what time on the 15th because we know all the means of people out there who really want to know about these conferences and who who we are going to award based on all the kind of things that we talked about, best venue, best exhibitor space, best non-vendor keynote, best vendor keynote, best food. We got it all covered, so. It's gonna be awesome. And and vendors take note, that's all we can say. And we will, we will give you a, with each winner, a why they won. Oh yeah, got to do the why they won. Yes, the why they won. We're not just announcing names here. No, no, we we do it all. But anyway. keep in mind, of course, on the other part of that is it's also that means why all the rest of you lost that category. <laughs> yeah, we. If you're interested in why you lost, you can give us a call. Right. We won't out you. you know. That's right. It will be private. We promise. <laughs> all right. Is that it? Did I think so. All right. So the net net is we're taking a a very hard wait and see with IBM. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, and you will see what happens with the awards when they come out. I don't know what camera I'm pointing at. It's like, you know. You pointed to the side according to what I'm seeing. Yeah. I, I've got like four, literally four cameras around me. I, I'll just do this. <laughs> that worked. It'll work. One of them will that work. Head on. <laughs> all right so with all that done i'm brent leary i'm paul greenberg we are the crm players and we're coming to a speedway near you we are out <laughs>